Hey everyone, today I've got something a little bit different from the normal videos I do. This is going to be a repair for my Craftsman 12 inch lathe. Uh, this specific lathe is the model 101.07383. I don't know the exact age of it. I know this lathe did come out around 1941 of this specific model anyway, made by Atlas uh, for Craftsman. And there is a million of these things out there. You see them all the time on Craigslist and eBay. That's where I actually purchased this on eBay a couple years ago. And it's been a good lathe. I've been making some repairs over the past couple years now um, as I learn more about it. And today, one of the repairs I'm going to be doing is replacing the bearings on the counter shaft assembly as they have some wear to them and need to be replaced. So I've already done some of the work here. I've already disassembled the lathe, the lathe a little bit, got the actual counter shaft bracket off of the lathe and press the bearings out which I'll show here in a minute in terms of what actually needs to be done. So looking behind the lathe here this is the actual counter shaft bracket that holds the counter shaft along with the motor mount which I have disassembled there. This sits back here like this. Uh, the, the pulley from the counter shaft sits here off of this belt and then a second belt feeds off of a pulley here down to the motor. This all comes apart pretty easily. Just a handful of bolts that separates it, that keeps it all together. And then you don't even need to separate your belts because when you remove the pulleys and the shafts, everything just kind of slides out. All right, back over the bench, I have the counter shaft bracket here, which I've removed from the lathe. And in these two locations is where the bearings live that I've actually already pressed out. Uh, I used my press to press these out. They came out relatively easily. And looking at these, they had been replaced before. When I purchased this lathe, the previous owner had done quite a bit of work on it. Um, it's red, so it was completely disassembled and repainted. And a lot of other components have been cleaned up, and some things repaired, replaced, some things you know, still left original. Uh, I've had to replace quite a few parts on there. Some gears were worn, uh, the half nuts were worn, I had to replace those. A lot of these parts you can find from a couple suppliers that still have them available. Other parts you find people that are remanu remanufacturing them that you can get on eBay, which is nice. And then everything else you pretty much have to make. And in this case, for these bearings, whoever had replaced them, because originally I believe they were oil light bearings that were specced for this unit, had replaced them with these brass bearings. So the first thing I noticed when removing them is that not, they're not even the same size. One's smaller than the other. Uh, they are definitely just brass, and they've got some holes that were drilled in them which were put there for the, for the actual oil cups on the bracket so that oil would pass through into the bearing shaft. One thing I always noticed when I would oil this and use this lathe you know, with the shaft that, that lived in here is that oil would always leak out the sides and kind of just dump all over the place. And the reason being is that these bearings are extremely worn. There's a lot of play. You can even hear it on the shaft in there. So all the oil would just seep out the sides. Uh, secondly, they're also very worn because this shaft is in terrible condition. So there's, there's, you can definitely see the, the pulleys have been spun off of it at some point. Uh, a lot of wear, a couple thousandths of wear on either side there that actually that lives in these bearings. And then lots of other just dents and marks and stuff like that from, you know, over time, people, you know, tightening or removing set screws. So I actually have a replacement shaft that I'm going to use in here as well. It's not perfect, but it is in significantly better condition than the one that was there. So these are 750 shafts, three quarter inch. Uh, this one's a little bit longer, but it's fine. I'll use it for now. Um, if I ever get around to it, I'll cut it down, but it's not necessary for this. So I've actually already cut a keyway in this as well for the uh, center pulley, which tightens into there. But the main point of this is actually just replacing these bearings. So. The bearings that are used for this are supposed to be oil light bearings, which I've actually ordered from McMaster Car. So if you notice, I've actually already replaced one of them in here, and I need to do the second one, uh, which is what I'm going to show here. So the oil light bearings are kind of neat. They're a porous material uh, made out of uh, bronze and some other metals, and oil will actually pass through the bearing, which is kind of neat. So they act like a sponge. Um, when you put oil in the cups, the oil sits on top of the bearing surface, and then it'll actually weep through the bearing, lubricating your shaft that, that is, is used in this bearing or bushing. You can actually uh, see this happening. Uh, I'll take some oil just in my finger. This is just regular 30 weight oil, and I'll put it inside the bearing itself, and you can see the oil coming right through the surface of the bearing. So I'll do it in the back here as well. Get a little bit more. Right there. So you can see the oil that has come through the surface. 
So it's neat material. Anyway, to replace these, what I'm going to do is press them into the uh, bracket here uh, with my little press. I've actually went through and, and, you know, these are supposed to be, you know, oiled from the factory, but adding additional oil is typically recommended. So I went through the other bearing that I've got sitting here and actually forced oil through it all around it to make sure it was full of oil. Then I just kind of left the sitting in oil until I was ready to use it, uh, which I am now. So the next step after that is actually going to be to press it into the, uh, the counter shaft bracket here. To do that, I have this uh, arbor, or an old arbor that was pretty beat up, it wasn't being used, that I machined down. Uh, I did this before I took the lathe apart. And um, it's just the right size to fit inside the bearing now. And then there's a little bit of relief on it uh, around the side here by, I think it was like 20 thousandths. So it can actually slide through when I was pressing these out. So this way it doesn't damage the edge of the bearing when you're pushing them in. So I will be doing this uh, when I reinsert this bearing into the shaft as well. One last little note, I wanted to take a look at these two bearings that I removed, the ones that were in there that I, that I pulled out uh, a little bit closer detail. So they're interesting, as I mentioned, these are non-original. Somebody had added them and sizes are completely different. One is definitely shorter than the other. So the first is almost 1.5, but not quite. And the second is 0.38 roughly. You know, compare that to the 1.5s that I placed in there that I ordered. And they're pretty much right spot on. So the other interesting thing about these bearings is the holes that were drilled into them. So as I mentioned, these are just brass, I believe, not oilite, not any type of round bushing. So they're not going to absorb any oil into them. So from the oil caps or the oil cups on the top to get oil into the actual sleeve, they drilled a couple holes here, which is fine. And that gets oil around inside and, and lubricates things. But if you look, they also have two additional holes over here on the, uh, on the sides. I don't know why those are there. I don't know if this is just a scrap piece that already had holes in it that they reused. I'm not sure if they messed up and drilled wrong. So who knows? And the holes themselves are very, very coarsely drilled. I mean, you can kind of see the, the pattern from the drill marks in there, you know, just from a standard drill bit going through. I mean, they're, they're smooth on the inside. There's, there's no burrs or anything. I mean, they've been in here for who knows how long. But strange, anyway, that, that that's how it was. And I should have probably looked at it closer uh, when I purchased the lathe. And because I mentioned there was a little bit of play in the shaft on these anyway, um, I probably should have just replaced it back then. But it didn't matter. Like I mentioned, this shaft was pretty much already well shot before I even before I even got it. So it needed to be replaced. Due to the height of this actual um, bracket on my press, along with my little arbor here, I actually need to remove the uh, plate here on the bottom to give me the clearance that I need, which is fine. And then I've got to scoot the, the actual uh, press a little bit further off my bench to clear the bottom here to reach around it, which isn't ideal, but uh, I don't have this bolted down. I'm just holding it as I'm actually pressing these in, but it's been working okay so far. So. Now I've got extra clearance, so I'll throw the plate back in. Gives me a little bit further support on that. Just the last little bit to go. pretty close. I think we're good there. So these bearings, as I mentioned, are from McMaster Car. The brand name for these is Oilite. I don't know if these are actually Oilite bearings or not. Uh, the ones that I got were basically, the generic term for them is oil embedded bronze sleeve bearings. In the case of the ones you need for the Craftsman lathe, they are inch and a half in length and three quarter inch diameter with a internal sleeve diameter of seven eighth. So I think they were like $2 a piece from McMaster car. So I ordered a couple extras in case I had any trouble pushing these in, but they actually went very well. So next uh, operation basically will be to reassemble this. I have to test the sh uh, shaft fitment as well on this bracket though. 
when you press these bearings in, a lot of times, you know, it can compress a little bit and you can end up with a slightly smaller internal diameter of the, uh, of the bearing surface there. In terms of fitment, I mean, that one's going in a little bit. On this side, I'm not having very much luck at all. Yeah. It's going in, but it's really, really tight. So, they definitely compressed a little bit. So here's the spare bearings that I have that were not pressed. Obviously, it fits on there just fine. So, I may have to ream these uh, with a 750 reamer just to make sure that you know, I've got the right size in there. So, reaming oil light bearings or you know bronze bearings like this, uh, you want to make sure you have a very, very sharp tool to make sure that you don't actually kind of smush the metal in there and decrease the effectiveness of the actual bearing itself. So to ream these, I'm going to be using a three-quarter inch or 750 uh, hand reamer. And, I mean, it's just going to be taking a tiny little bit off of these. It almost feels like the middle is a little bit more compressed than the ends. So there's plenty of oil in there still, but I'm just going to add a little bit extra to the end of the reamer here. Anyway, and we'll ream. through. So bring it back out. There we are. There's a little bit of material on there. It's not good lighting right here, but it took off a little bit. And it's definitely a nice fit now. So we will flip this and do the same to the other side. It almost looks like a little bit less material on that one. So one problem I've come across while putting this back together is the two bearings I've pressed in. The alignment of them is, isn't quite exactly perfect. I was having trouble where I put the shaft in and it would come down to actually strike the lower bearing here. And then it would start to get really stiff as I tried to rotate it between the two even though it's been freely along the one bearing, uh, either one, by itself. So the reamer I've been using is actually, you know, 750 as I mentioned, but the shaft of it is also 750, which what it allows me to do is start reaming this upper hole and then go down and then ream into the second hole. And then the alignment will be kept because I'm actually 750 in this upper bearing here. So working this down, Bring it back up. I've done this a few times now. And after that, the shaft goes in and freely spins. It actually feels really, really nice how it should feel. Specifications for these bearings typically say you only need a thousandths clearance between the actual shaft and the bearing itself. So I was curious to see where mine were actually at after reaming. And checking them. I, mean, I am right at 750. So pretty much spot on. So we should be good at this point. I am happy with the uh, new bearings in there. And we just need to reassemble. And that'll be the final step. So 
So here is the counter shaft assembly, completely reassembled on my Craftsman 12 inch lathe. Uh, I didn't film putting it back together because it goes together pretty simple. So a couple notes here. First, the entire assembly spins very freely. So the new shaft in the new bearings, it uh, feels great. And without the load in the motor, it actually spin very, very freely. It was very, very nice. Second thing is the shaft is a little bit longer than it was supposed to be, as I mentioned in the video earlier, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it for now. I don't have a cover that covers the counter shaft assembly, at least this pulley on this lathe anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The next thing I want to note is that the pulley I have on here is actually not the original pulley. Uh, the original pulley is uh, kind of a bronzish color, cast, cast aluminum, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure. So the, the pulley that was on here, the original one, was actually damaged when I purchased this lathe. So I purchased um, just one of these cheap casting cast aluminum ones off eBay. And the problem with it is, is that it still has a little bit of a wobble to it. So I'll start it up here. You can't really see it on video. But there is a slight little movement back and forth to it, which is annoying because it's brand new. This is actually the second one of these I bought too. The first one I bought, which again was here, another different brand casting um i'm sure these are all made in china but you know they're like 30 35 bucks a piece had the same problem and i'm like oh it's just you know maybe i'll try a different brand which is what i did but i've got the same problem with this so i'm gonna have to do a little more research and invest a little bit more money into a more proper pulley on this because that little bit of wobble does induce some vibration that i can feel in the lathe which i really really don't like the downside of going to these pulleys is that i lose the secondary speed um between you know the primary the motor drive and to here so I've got the pulley, original pulley, here for, you know, the motor shaft down there as well. And you can see that on the inner the inner pulley here for your, your lower speed, it's damaged as well. So I have the steel pulley that I put on there, and I'm using that um, for this, for the single speed, at least in this area now. I do primarily work on aluminum, so the couple speeds that I get out of this by adjusting the pulley up here um, is perfectly fine. So it, it works just well for me. The motor on this lathe is original, which is kind of neat. Um, it, I plan to at least get a variable frequency drive on this at some point. I have another motor that I purchased, three quarter horsepower out in the garage, which I'd like to put on here. This is a half horsepower here. Um, it's fine for what it is. I just came across the other motor for cheap. And the plan was if this one ever died, which uh, it's in good shape, it should be fine. But I do have another one on there to do it. Another note regarding the bearings is that I've added oil to the oil cups and they, it is properly going through into the into the bronze wishings and lubricating the shaft. And that oil I put in there, I actually checked it later and it had all absorbed down inside. So I know regardless that I ream these, they are still properly lubricating the shaft. And I had played a little bit with this too before I completely assembled it together just to see to make sure that I was getting proper lubrication inside on the shaft, which I was. So I'll engage the upper pulley system there. And everything is running very, very well. So I'm super happy with the uh, with this uh, upgrade. So the lathe is operating very well, very smooth. Um, I did some test cuts. I turned a little piece of aluminum here just to, to try it out, and um, it's great. So. So this video is kind of a divergence from my typical videos where I do a lot of electronics repair, specifically with you know, older, uh, late 80s, early 90s synthesizers and effects processors, things like that. But this was an interesting enough repair for me that I felt it was worth videotaping. Because uh, when I was doing research into actually replacing these bearings, I couldn't find very much information out there on it. So if you found this video interesting, uh, let me know. I may continue a series on this separate from my normal videos as well, because there is a lot of other uh, upgrades that I need to make to this lathe uh, as I go through it and replace additional components and things like that. So hopefully this was useful and thank you for watching.